Right, welcome everybody uh, to the uh, Mikhil YouTube channel and we're going to start our very first video with five things that you need to know about eight ball pool. So most important shot you would think or most people would think is the break off shot. And first things first, racking of the balls. So really, you know, it's so important to get these balls, you know, touching each other. You know, sometimes, you know, it's not always easy. Uh, but primarily the first six balls around the eight ball, we really want touching. And it's so important for the back row of balls to be touching as well. As I said, really, we want all the balls to be touching. That's going to give you the biggest opportunity to get the, the highest probability of making a ball off the break. So let's discuss the break. You know, the idea of um, how do we make a ball off the break? Well, if I could tell you that, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't we all be millionaires? What we can do is we can hit the balls with more power. We can hit the balls with accuracy. We can hit the balls to, to, to increase our probability of making a ball. You know, if you can appreciate the theory of the more the balls see the pockets, the more chance of one are dropping. So, first and foremost, for me, in my opinion, I'm looking to put the cue ball in and around here. Now you might say, well, well, why is that? So for me, I don't want the cue ball too far forward from the braking rail. And the reason for this is you've got too much cue hanging over. So effectively, when we draw the cue back to then break, if you are effectively trying to reach for the cue ball, you've lost your maximum power point. So a demonstration of that would be, is there's your cue ball, I bring the cue back, and now I'm ready to strike. But I'm not at the cue ball. I'm actually that far away from the cue ball. So now I'm, my power is gonna be lost hitting through the ball, and my accuracy is gonna be lost. The more cue that you've got hanging over from the rail, the more accurate you have to be that when you pull to the top of the backswing, and then come through, your accuracy is going to be lost if you've got too much cue hanging over. Now, with that said, we also don't want the cue ball too close to the rail. Because now the theory goes the other way, of when we come to the top of the backswing, and we come through, we now reach the cue ball before our maximum power point. So, for me, as, as, as a personal preference, everybody's a little bit different. I like to kind of be in and around sort of, if, if, if we want to look at it as, as 100 to the line, I'm, I'm kind of in and around 80, about eight, about 80, about 80 of the 100 to the line. Some people happy forward, some people happy back, but that's, that's my preference. Now, we can hit it straight on, we can hit it from here, we can hit it from here. Now every table is going to break different. The cloth is going to be worn, the cloth is going to be brand new. The balls are going to be worn, the balls are going to be brand new. We can't always get the rack to be the same every single time. Tables will break different to heating, to weather conditions, believe it or not. If it's very, very cold, the cloth will absorb a lot of the damp, which of course the balls aren't racing around the table as fast because the cloth's not as fast. A brand new slick table like this um, that has actually just been recently recovered, you wouldn't need to hit the brake with anywhere near as much power and still get a good result. So, next tip. Don't be afraid to move the ball around. You know, I've watched many players down the years, me included, come off the table, couldn't make a ball off the brake, but actually hit it from the same place every time expecting something to change. Move it around. Maybe your opponent's breaking from here, making balls regular. You're breaking from here, not making any balls. Well, let's go over here as well. Have a look, have a look what's happening with the balls when your opponent's breaking. Is the second ball going into the side? You know, what, what's actually happening? Take, take, a, take a good assessment when your opponent is breaking. To, to have a look at really what is going on. And of course, try and emulate it yourself. Now, when it comes to the break-off shot, 
there's various different break off shots that you can make. So do we break off the rail like this? Well, in my opinion, no, because what happens here is, is that the cue then comes up with the power. You get an un un unintentional top spin. A small ball hitting the big balls isn't going to work with top spin. Just the same as striking down on the ball, we don't want to impart backspin because if we impart backspin, again, we're losing a lot of power into the pack. We're losing a lot of energy. Yes, the cue ball is going to come back towards you when you break, but that is purely because of the physics of the balls. We want to be hitting down through the break, but not creating backspin. We want to go down through the break, give the cue ball as much energy, as much power as possible to hit the front ball. Hopefully we get this explosion because the balls are racked up correctly. We've struck it nicely and we make a ball. Now, you can break off your hand. This would be the demonstration of that. Now, sometimes I would break off like that if I'm kind of feeling like I haven't got this break going on. I'm a little bit rusty or I don't quite like it or I'm struggling to control the cue ball. I'm not generating the power. I'm sending the cue ball into the side pockets purely because I'm not timing it fantastically well. So there is that option. The other option is what we call the cut break. Now, many people would know from a personal preference to me, I'm not a great advocate of the cut break in professional pool uh, because I really believe it's a skill to hit the front ball head on. Um, and I think professional players, you know, it could be argued that you should be made to do that. But that's a story for another day. That's for another video. The cut break. Now, the cut break, I believe, is a, is a fantastic way of at least making something happen to creating a spread of balls if you struggle to generate power, it's in the front ball. So, what the cut break enables you to do is hit the second ball down with as much power as you can, of course. The cue ball will come into the side cushion and then back into the cluster. Now, what is the downside to the cut break? Now, the cut break is all about hitting this ball, the second ball down, as flush as you can possibly hit it. The more of that ball you hit, the more power that, that is generated through the pack of balls. If we catch the edge of the ball, we're in danger of going off the table. If we catch the front ball, the head ball first, we're going to go flying off the table. So it's very, very important we catch as much of the second ball down as possible. Now, the incredible skill element to this is how much power do you dare use to hit this second ball with maximum power? So, but again, if it's done correctly, which we will demonstrate, you know, there's, um, there's fantastic rewards for it. So first and foremost, we're going to have a look and we're going to try and hit the front ball head on Around about 80% to the line for me is my preference. As I said, some go all the way to the line, some a little bit further back. And let's see if we can get a good spread of balls. Okay. So, good news, bad news. Actually, this is a, a real interesting opportunity to explain what actually went on there. Did I hit the balls well? Yes. Did I make a couple of balls? Yes. Was the balls racked correctly? No. In fact, not even close to being racked correctly. There was no explosion. There was no spread. The balls didn't move anywhere. You know, the probability was, was next to nothing. But I was fortunate to make a couple of balls on this occasion. And as it is, the yellow balls actually don't look too bad. So, as soon as we've made a ball, let's have a look at how we would play the balls from here. So, in international rules, I've pocketed two reds on the break in this instance. But I can take any set that I want. So effectively, after the break, it's just open table if a ball is pocketed. And in this instance here, 
I like the layout of the yellows. So even though I've potted two red balls, I believe that the yellow ball, uh, sorry, the, the yellow balls offer a better, a better opportunity to clear. Problem area. There's four balls here. I've the opportunity to play this ball and make something happen. Now, when cannoning into balls, it's all about probability. The probability of what direction, what speed control, do I want to attack the problem area? So that the probability of getting a good result is in my favor. This is direction and speed control a lot of times. So if I crash into these balls heavily and I don't get a result, I can't really claim to be unlucky because there is a calculated shot to be played. It just depends on what your skill level is. This is the problem. This red needs to be eliminated from this cluster of balls. I do have the opportunity here to make something happen. So I'm going to pop this ball into the corner and cannon into these balls here. Let's see what we get. Okay, so, not the worst result, not exactly as played. I would like to have gone a little bit lower on the cue ball and made something happen here, but there's lots of options. I've so many options here to still tackle this area. So I've got this ball here that goes into the centre. It may squeeze into here. But primarily, we've still got this problem here because I fractionally got a little bit too low on the cue ball when trying to cannon into the cluster. So, you may look at the screen and you may go, well, would he play this ball here and come into here? Well, not really in an ideal world because we're trying to take the red out of the equation so the yellow ball then pots. What we don't want to be doing is we don't want to be taking balls and coming this way because we're now pushing balls back into areas where our, our balls already go. So the calculation here needs to be, how can we deal with this without possibly spoiling something else? So again, we got, we've got this ball. This ball does go into here, okay? And this ball at the moment, maybe just goes into here, but it certainly goes into the middle. So have a think about it for yourself. Have a think about this situation. Have a look at the way the balls are sitting. How would you actually tackle this area? Okay. So let's have a good look. Hmm. Okay. Not easy, right? So I'm going to play this ball into the corner. So play the ball into the corner and come into this area. And I'm very happy with this situation. I'm then going to play the one into the centre and I want to leave myself the angle of the yellow into the pocket here to just tickle the red to the back cushion. So this is all about trying to get the shot right, trying to get a good feel for the shot, and trying to get this sort of natural little angle that I speak about a lot to try and play this cannon just nice. So just drop this one into the center. Okay. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna play this yellow here. And I'm gonna play the yellow this side of the pocket, that's all I've got, to just knock this red out of the way. Now, I want to be careful when I cannon this red that when I cannon it, I get it out of the way of the pocket. So I can either play it very, very softly to knock it to the rail, or I can play it with a little bit more speed so it hits the rail and comes back out. So that's the shot that I'm going to play. So yellow ball into the corner, and knock this red ball. Beautiful. Exactly as played. 
I've got the connecting ball here into the middle pocket to then connect here, come back across, yellow, yellow. Okay, so this is the important shot at this stage. Okay, so apply the yellow into the center, run through, okay. So again, come and have a look at your work. We don't really want to be straight on this yellow into the corner because we want to draw up to the eight ball. So we're looking to just pop the ball. And if that's our line, we want to be fractionally this side. So take a little bit of care. Okay, lovely. Fantastic. So we've got a couple of options here. We can either go forwards and come into here, or we can elevate the cue and drop back. So, as everyone knows, I'm a big believer that you play the natural angle. There was a little bit too steep an angle for me. I could have, I could have dug up a little bit. I'm a fraction further than what I want to be, but I'm delighted with it. Cue the ball. And that's how we run out of racquetballs.